Hello, this is Nigeria in 2050 and time again for the weather forecast. The satellite imagery you are seeing is an animation of rainstorms which have been affecting the country in the past one week, resulting to flooding and submerging of land, submerging of vehicles, submerging of farmlands. As we can see, people displaced from their homes and a general effect on livelihoods. Today again, we are expecting a repeat of such a widespread activity as conditions in the atmosphere suggest so. We see moisture influx from the Atlantic Ocean into the country increasing and we see increasing relative humidity values in red coloration as shown at levels of 1,500 meters above the ground. Let's now quickly take a look at today's forecast in details. Starting with temperature, usually in Nigeria, the highest temperatures are recorded during the hot season in March and in April. But in July, we usually experience a drop in temperature as a result of the rains. However, today, maximum temperature values are still likely to reach 36 degrees Celsius over the northeast, 35 degrees Celsius over places like Sokoto. And as we move down the coastal areas, we are to look out for values within the range of 29 over Lagos and 31 degrees Celsius over Port Harcourt. The lowest temperature value is expected over just Plateau at 26 degrees Celsius. These temperatures coupled with the increase in relative humidity and other conditions are likely to favor storms over the northeastern part of the country in the morning. As the day progresses, these storms propagate westwards and are likely to affect the central parts of the country and other parts of the south. Partly cloudy to cloudy conditions are likely to prevail over the northeast. From this forecast, it can be said that risk of flooding is high, particularly over the coastal areas. The intensity and frequency of such events are likely to increase as the days go by and as human activities of discharge of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere continues unabated. IPCC posits that global warming is caused mainly by man than by natural causes. The global temperature trend shows increasing trends from 1880 to recent period. Trends of temperature over Nigeria shown below also show an increasing trend in line with the global trend up to recent periods. Projected temperature anomalies show that temperatures are likely to increase in the future. And this shows that climate change is real in Nigeria, coupled with the charts and other features that we have seen. It shows that climate change is already a reality in Nigeria. There is need, therefore, for man to work towards safeguarding our environment. It is known that as humans continue to depend solely on fossil fuel for energy, they discharge carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This carbon dioxide traps terrestrial radiation and keeps the earth unusually warmer than normal. We can therefore safeguard our environment by taking measures towards adaptation and mitigation against effects of climate change. This we can do by planting of trees to replace trees that are lost through deforestation. We can also resort to alternative energy sources like solar and nuclear en energy sources. We can also institute policies that will check an, our land use practices. When this is done, we can safeguard our environment and secure the future for our future generation. Thank you for watching. As you have just seen, climate change will increasingly affect our day-to-day -day weather. But we don't have to wait until 2050 to witness its impact. Already today, many parts of the world are experiencing more intense rainfall, floods, storms, heat waves, droughts. We need to minimize these negative impacts. And the best way to do that is to rapidly and significantly reduce our emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. But at the same time, because the planet is already committed to a significant amount of warming, we must also learn to adapt to changing climate conditions. We need to build greater climate resilience. 
designing our cities, and preparing our societies to cope better with extreme weather events. We need to further reduce disaster risk, in particular through improved early warning systems, informing people and the authorities about how to take effective action to protect their families and livelihoods from all major hazards, including cyclones, storm surges, floods, droughts, and temperature extremes. We also have to expand the scope of today's weather services by developing climate services that help people to understand and respond to current and future climate vulnerabilities. The scientific message is clear. The more we reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the less we shall have to do to adapt, and the less costly it will be. Let's work together to ensure a safer and more sustainable future for current and future generations. Thank you.